Hello, my name is Amanda Hickman with the Hickman Group. I'm a code consultant and I've been in code development work for over 13 years. Hi, uh, this is Stuart Oakner. I am a product development consultant for Rectoseal. I have been in the air conditioning business for about 30 years now. I had my own company. And during that time, I ended up inventing a product called Safety Switch. And it's always been my mission from day one, you know, how to improve ways to manage condensate problems, uh, whether clogged drain lines, leaking, anything to take care of the problems with uh, drain lines. Air conditioning systems remove condensation from homes and businesses by using a, an evaporator coil within the air handler. An evaporator coil acts similar if you think of a cold glass uh, with ice in it on a hot day sitting on a table, you're going to see that glass just dripping with uh, condensation and uh, puddling up around the bottom of the glass. The evaporator coil in the air conditioner does the same thing. It's removing moisture from the air. And uh, that moisture ends up on the evaporator coil and drips down. At the bottom of the evaporator coil is a drain pan and that drain pan collects the condensate water. These drain pans uh, typically have two outlets on them. One is a primary uh, drain outlet that carries the condensation away, usually outside the home or office. And it has a secondary outlet that is there in case the primary outlet gets clogged, the water would continue to rise in the drain pan and come out that auxiliary outlet. And what they use are uh, float switches today that are used, uh, they have a float switch that would mount onto the secondary outlet. So if the primary drain line clogs, uh, the water would fill up, it would go into this float switch and raise the float up and that would shut the unit off and prevent that drain pan from overflowing. They do have float switches that go into the primary drain line as well to do the same thing. Uh, these air handlers and evaporator coils are located either in closets and garages, either vertical or sometimes they're horizontal up in an attic. And they all require, in uh, most places, a secondary pan or a safety pan or an auxiliary pan that goes underneath the whole unit. In case the drain pan in the, in the primary unit uh, clogs and fails and the float switch is not installed, uh, that water is going to overflow and we want it to be caught to a secondary pan, whether it's vertical or horizontal in an attic. And that pan, again, will have a float switch in it too. So it's extra protection. And that's basically it. But what happens is a lot of these drain lines uh, will end up clogging due to algae or debris from the dirt getting in the coil. Uh, it all runs through that drain line, especially in the hot months, algae grows very quickly and you get a lot of clogged lines. So the float switches are really there to protect uh, from overflows. The International Mechanical Code, or IMC, contains requirements for condensate switches since the 2006 edition of the code. Per the published IMC code commentary, the intent of this section is to provide adequate overflow protection on all coils that do not have a secondary drain and have no provisions for a secondary or auxiliary drain pan. A water level monitoring device like the one shown in the commentary figures is required to be installed in a primary drain pan. The IMC also has provisions for monitoring secondary or auxiliary lines as well again from the 2018 IMC code to commentary. An auxiliary redundant drain pan or secondary drain is required for equipment locations where condensate overflow would cause damage to the building. The purpose of the auxiliary drain pan and secondary drain is to catch condensate spilling from the primary condensate removal system in the equipment. This backup protects the building from structural and finished damage. This section is intended to protect the building from damage, not building contents such as storage. Condensate drains are notorious for clogging because of debris, lint and dust, and air handling systems and naturally affinity to produce slime and biogrowths in drain pans and pipes. It is relatively common for condensate overflows to cause damage to the buildings. This section lists four options for preventing damage where the equipment is located in spaces such as attics, above suspended ceilings and furred spaces, and locations on upper stories. 
One of the four methods must be used. Method one, use his auxiliary drain pan below the coils on which condensate will occur and an independent drain line that discharges to a location that is easily observable to notify the building occupants that a problem with the drain primary pan exists. The code prescribes the depth of the pan and the specific material thickness to ensure that the pan will be corrosion resistant and will have sufficient holding capacity and captureability. The thickness of metallic material was changed to reflect the low end tolerance for number 24 gauge galvanized sheet metal. Method two, uses an independent overflow drain line connect to the primary drain pan at a point higher than the primary drain line. Most of Aperta cooler pans are factory provided with an overflow drain tap that can be used for this purpose. As in method one, the point of discharge must be easily observable. Method three, uses a water level detection device, usually a float switch or electronic sensor that must conform to the requirements of UL508. Located in, the, in an auxiliary drain pan, these detector devices will shut down the equipment before the pan overflows. There is no requirement, uh, requirement for a separate drain line in this method. Method four also uses a water level detection device located in the drain line from the primary drain pan or the overflow line from the primary drain pan rather than the secondary drain pan in method three. See commentary figures 30723.2 and 30723.3. Both met methods three and four will notify the building occupants that a blockage has occurred because the cooling system will cease to function. The exception recognizes that some fuel fired appliances that produce condensate will have a built in method of shutting down when a blockage occurs. And now to add a little bit more to the intent of this language, the IMC commentary was recently updated and will be available in the 2021 edition, which elaborates uh, a lot more on the importance of proper maintenance and what is behind the intent of this code section. It states condensate from evaporators and cooling coils contain dust, scale, and biological growth such as algae. Buildup of this mixture inside the condensate piping can restrict the flow of condensate and eventually cause the float switch in the condensate pan of the HVAC unit to shut down and shut down the unit. Maintenance must be periodically performed to clear restrictions and blockages in the piping. During the initial installation of the HVAC equipment, installers who are focused on the need for future drain maintenance often assemble the piping together using permanent connection methods such as soldering, solvent cementing, crimping, or by use of fittings that are not intended to be reused after the initial installation. In these situations, when future service is needed, the service person has no choice other than to sever the pipe or drill a hole in the side of the piping to gain access to the interior of the piping. This commentary goes on to talk about how service personnel are not often prepared to properly reconnect the piping systems. And so there are a lot of inappropriate connections that are used. Um, that can happen in the initial installation where specific couplings and configurations are used that are not truly providing the access for proper clearing out of the blockages or uh, preventing the pipe itself from being cut or severed. And so the commentary is a lot more detailed on providing some explanation as to how much thought needs to go into this um, proper installation in, in the first installation. And in fact, the original proposal that added this language to the IMC contained a reason statement for why this language was important. It states, drain line stoppages in evaporative coil drain pan drain lines are unavoidable and common occurrences requiring clearing the drain line. Clearing these lines almost always involves cutting the drain line itself, causing water to leak into the attic or closet where the drain is located. 
The technician then blows compressed air through the drain line in both directions from the cut. The cut must be repaired by resealing the drain line with PVC coupling and solvent. This process exposes the surrounding area to water leakage and spillage with the risk of damage and mold, as well as the extra time and effort of carrying equipment, parts, and flammable solvents. The process takes extra time and costs the homeowner more money. If clearing the drain lines were part of regular maintenance, line blockages could largely be prevented in the first place. The new drain line maintenance code says, drain lines shall be configured to permit the clearing of blockages and performance of maintenance without having to cut the drain line. And what's happening out in the field now, there seems to be a, just a misconception about or the, of the intent of this code. And what we're finding is that uh, contractors are installing PVC T's in the drain line or pieces of clear hose or couplings or unions. Uh, and it's missing the intent of the code. And in some places, uh, code officials or inspectors are allowing it, uh, maybe because the intent is not clear. But we all know that if you put a PVCT in a drain line and the drain line is clogged beyond the PVCT and you try to blow pressure in or clear it in any manner, uh, it, the air pressure or any kind of pressure you're using is gonna go the path of least resistance. So it's not gonna attack the clog, it's gonna go the other way and actually come out through the unit. Uh, any kind of clear hose or unions is not gonna meet the code because you're pulling apart the line and the intent of the code is not to have water dripping on the floor and to still be able to clear the drain line. So, you know, we have to figure out uh, what's going on here and it has to make sense. and. Uh, there are products on the market uh, like RectoSeal's uh, All Access AA1 and uh, other cleanouts that they carry, you know, like an SC1 cleanout. And these are simple, inexpensive products that are glued into the drain line that allow uh, a contractor or a homeowner to be able to open the cover of these devices and look inside, uh, do maintenance monthly uh, if needed or any time and pour in chemicals such as RectoSeal has a chemical for a drain line cleaner, it's called New Line. Or uh, contractors could use nitrogen uh, to blow out the drain lines in either direction. Uh, they can use a wet vac to vacuum out the line in either direction uh, using these products. Or use water to flush out the lines. Any method anybody wants to use that they feel is safe and effective, they can now use effectively while meeting the code. Hi, RectoSeal has just come out with a brand new AC drain line clean out device, model SC1. And you're gonna love this. I gotta show you how it works. You can see how small it is. Uh, it's a small device, and I'm gonna show you the benefits of this device. So. Again, you go out here and uh, you're just going to cut your drain line and you're going to glue in the device into the drain line. And it does have arrows to show a direction uh, of which you want it to go away from the unit. So you can put it anywhere in the drain line. It could go on an angle. It could go, uh, you know, an angle down like this. It could go vertically if you need to put it vertically. Wherever you can fit it in the drain line, you want to get as close to the unit as possible. And if you could put it coming right out of the unit horizontally, that's the best. So let's see how it works. So uh, right now it's set up where the contractor can come out. And if they like to use CO2 or nitrogen, they can hook up their uh, hose to it, whether it's CO2 or nitrogen, if that's what you prefer to use. Uh, here is a line shot uh, CO2 gun from RectoSeal. It's a new product, fits right onto this clean out. And what happens, I'm gonna show you when you pull the trigger, I'm gonna show you, it'll clear this drain line. Let me show you how it works. So if we open up the top, you can see the cam is marked, locked and unlocked, makes it very easy. You simply turn these cams and it allows the top cover to lift off. And you can see it's wide open inside, nothing in here to, to uh, uh, stop any flow or get in the way of any flow. So all you're doing is looking into the drain line at this point. 
The beauty of it is there's a flapper built into the top cover. Now, when you blow in through the CO, using CO2 or nitrogen, it's pushing this flapper closed inside here and sealing off going back towards the unit. And as long as you keep pressure on, you're blowing out that line. As soon as you take the pressure off, the flapper opens up and it's a clear path again. And then you simply just put this back on and lock it in. Now, if you don't want to use CO2 and nitrogen, and that's not the way you like to do it, you walk up to the unit, you open the cams, you take the door off. Now, just having this opening allows you uh, or the homeowner to pour in drain line cleaners like uh, Rectoseal New Line or use uh, tablets like Actabs, Rectoseal's Actabs, and you can put it right in there to keep the line clean. Each one of these devices, these SC1 devices, comes with this adapter. Now, this adapter will fit directly in. It fits into two grooves right inside of the drain line, and you just push it down, and now you have a full connection, and you can blow out this drain line using uh, Rectoseal's Mighty Pump or the AC Drain Foot Pump uh, that's very popular now, and the hose would fit right on. Either one, the hose will fit right on here nice and tight. You don't have to hold this in place and you can blow out the line. If you like to use a wet vac, you could even wet vac it from here and, and do it that way. Any method you want. Then also, if you need to, if you feel there's any debris coming out of the unit's uh, drain outlet, you can go in this way and do what you need to do. Uh, so it's you know it's fully made for any method you want to use. It just gives you an access. It meets the new code. Uh, it's not like putting a T in the line where you're limited, you can't do anything but pour in a chemical. This is a true code approved access device to get into the drain line and be able to clear and maintain it. Then you just take this, the arrows are facing away. I lock the cam and I lock the cam on this side and you can see we're ready to go. So it's simple, you walk up to the unit, you either hook up your nitrogen or CO2, you blow out the line. Or if you don't wanna do that, you take the top cover off you use the adapter and you use any method you want, you clear the line. Literally takes seconds to service this drain line. And trust me, up in an attic, you want to walk up there, you'll be very happy to see one of these up there because that's all you got to do is, is do whatever you need to do, CO2, nitrogen, or, or a, a foot pump or mighty pump, anything you want to do, but you already have the access. There's no cutting the lines, nothing. Simple job. SC1 model from Rectoseal and safety switch, thank you.